Hello, cyber citizens. Welcome to What the Science. The place where you get your answers with the science behind it. This is Facto Science. In this section we explain the science behind mysteries, fiction, technology, etc. Before starting with the topic. Here is Facto Science question. Name the most expensive substance on Earth. Stay tuned to find out the correct answer. And now get ready to flex your brain muscles because we are going to get started. Now suppose that you are at a situation wherein you have to protect yourself. You are provided with a choice of a metal shield, plastic shield and wooden shield. Given that all the shields are not that heavy to lift, what will you choose? Definitely, most of you will go for metal shield and rest of you will go for plastic one. But very few of you will go for a wooden shield. Now let's make it more clear. You have to save yourself from bullets. Now definitely all of you will go from the metal shield. If you want to live. Because for obvious reasons the tensile strength of metal will be more than a wood, so it will absorb the impact better than wood. But what if we say that we have actually created a bulletproof wood? Wood is a great material, but compared to things like concrete, marble, and steel, it is not all that strong. But now scientists have created a super wood that's strong enough to stop a bullet. This isn't the world's first engineered wood. Plywood, fiberboard, and particle board are all examples of engineered wood. They are made by compressing smaller pieces of wood into a single chunk that's stronger than its composite parts. Of those three, plywood is the strongest. But if you want to stop a bullet, we wouldn't recommend jumping behind a plywood barrier. For that, you'll need super wood. Super wood, surprisingly, is very easy and cheap to create. First, you boil the wood in a solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide. That removes much of the wood's lignin and hemicellulose, two polymers that stiffen the plant cell walls but leaves another polymer, cellulose, intact. This part of the process isn't much different than the first step of making paper. It might seem counterintuitive but removing or weakening these polymers is the key to making ultra-strong wood. The next step is to start compressing. You subject the wood to enough pressure to collapse the cell walls entirely. Then you turn up the heat a bit and keep the pressure going. Unrestricted by the cell walls, the hydrogen atoms of the cellulose begin to form powerful chemical bonds with their neighboring atoms, making the material denser and stronger than ever before. And then the wood becomes 20 times stiffer, 10 times harder to break, and 50 times more resistant to compression. It's not just stronger than steel, it's stronger than some cutting-edge titanium alloys. There's a lot we could do with a substance that's almost as cheap and easy to produce as paper, stronger than titanium, and lightweight. Maybe a bulletproof jacket. But the super wood isn't quite as strong as Kevlar, but it's about 20 times cheaper. It might also become a favorite for building cars and other vehicles since it can grant the fuel-efficient benefits of a lightweight frame, without the subsequent rise in price or environmental impact of plastic. And if you remove the lignin which lends wood its color and replace it with another polymer called methyl metaacrylate, also known as plexiglass, the result was transparent wood. So your future car might not just be riding on a wooden frame, it could have a wooden windshield as well. So that's it from this episode of Facto Science. You can watch other episodes by clicking on the link above. And if you liked the episode, hit the thumbs up button. Any suggestions and ideas for future episodes, please comment below. Subscribe as well, because we make videos every week, and press the bell icon to get notified. You can also connect with us on Twitter and Facebook. All the links are provided below. Thank you for watching. Coming back to our facto science question. The answer is antimatter. Production of 1 mg of positrons costs about $25 million. 
In theory, we will be able to use antimatter as fuel for spacecraft in the future. But the drawback today is that to make just one gram of it, all of mankind will have to work for about a year without rest. Hope this video created a spark in your gray cells and helped you to understand the intricacies. We will meet again soon with another video. Till then stay curious and keep learning.